Yeah. You're right, guys. So, um, yeah, some interesting conversations uh, going on, um, you know, last night uh, with regards to well, several things, and um, and one of them is obviously the risk of uh, sentiment, right? And uh, keeping up to date with the risk of sentiment. And um, I do want to kind of uh, talk about uh, risk of sentiment, and um, I guess my approach, not necessarily. Um, uh, you know how you should trade it right because we all know that risk in a risk off environment what should typically happen yeah now um, before I get into into that just you know risk off in itself one of the key things that I've learned over the years is is to um, is to try to understand what the market really cares about and at the moment, the market is, you know, caring about the, um, you know, Russia invading Ukraine, right? That is a thing in the US. Biden is saying that, you know, he believes uh, an attack is coming. So that that definitely sounds very risk offish. And the market is actually reacting in that and typically should react to that kind of um, in, in uh, that, that environment, right? That scenario, you know, what is happening now? Um, as a trader, you have to decide what it is that you really want to do um, in a risk off environment, whether you want to, you know, sit out. Yeah, which is what I generally will tend to do. Um, and I say generally and typically because there are some risk events that, you know, and it, I, I, I couldn't say which ones they are. But when it comes to war, yeah, um, war is going to become almost and it's, it's a horrible thing to say but price will not keep going down because there is a war some wars have lasted for years right um but then there is some sort of norm normality to the war right um you know if you think about you know uh, syria and libya and stuff like that in the past like those wars and invasions yeah um yes were typically risk off events but during those times you still had you know the the, the the yen didn't just keep strengthening and strengthening and swiss franc didn't just keep strengthening you know what i mean and, and money keep going into those safe haven assets you know what i mean uh, there are period there are there is a time where you know where, where that risk off is actually priced in plus you always have to remember that there's a liquidity issue right everyone can't get short you know what i mean there has to be um liquidity to provide those continuous shorts and uh, the money is not necessarily made where the obvious trade is right so you have to keep that in mind at some point this risk off event will be priced into the market it's being priced in now which is probably why you're seeing um you know for example the new zealand swiss new zealand yen you know what i mean start to um uh, you know fall in any kind of you know safe haven currency strengthen and, and commodity currencies not strengthen right so it prices are reacting at the moment typically yeah to what it should do in a risk off environment right so then getting back to what is really you know your approach and our approach to certain things so um and i say our but you know it's got to be kind of subjective now my approach to risk off and risk on environments is this is risk off right so row row right risk on risk off the risk off side i have a general view yeah that that problems will always get resolved eventually yeah whether it's war whether it's you know what i mean um you know the virus etc problems will always get resolved eventually and as a i guess as 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 um as the human race are, are one of the things that we do is, is problem solve right we don't like chaos and you know what i mean for too long and uncertainty for too long right people want to fix things and you know what i mean get on with their lives and just live normal lives stress-free etc so you know there's always a resolution there's always light at the end of the tunnel at some point so with that you know i guess overall view overall view um i tend to look at risk off as buying opportunities so 
again, as I said, there are risk of scenarios where I might think to myself, this is just so obviously and so blatant that, you know, I might start taking maybe a bit of a speculative position. But in maybe the war scenarios, um, I will um, generally, I generally and typically will wait for things to kind of resolve because, you know, you've got you know, all these you know, talks, diplomats, da, 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 whatever it is. And even if war does kind of break out to a certain degree, God forbid, um, again, there's going to be some sort of resolution. So with that being said, if I want to be a buyer of a currency that I know should be, you know, hiking rates and the fundamentals, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, yeah. What let's say, for example, just a typical, you know, I don't know, dollar Swiss, right? Or even, even more, even better, cad, cad, cad yen, right? Cad yen currency pair, right? So as a commodity currency, you know, in a risk-off environment, typically, you know, this should go down and money should flow into the the, the safe havens, right? Now you can trade, you know, buy the yen, yeah. If you want to buy the yen, I'm not saying that you shouldn't, right? Everyone's got their own uh, thing that they want to do. Um, but what the, what I typically look towards is. Um, is is looking for when there are bargains, right? So let me let me just you know, do that. And let's say, for example, there's you know we were in a um, you know we got we got demand zones, right? And then all of a sudden we get like um, we get uh, you know risk off, right? And risk off starts to kind of go through these zones. Now nobody knows, nobody knows, nobody has a clue. Yeah, as to you know which zone is going to react. Of course, it can cut through like a hot knife through butter at some of these zones, and some zones might be profit taking. Again, even during a risk off environment, there are pullbacks. In the same way that in risk on environments, there are pullbacks because we have to understand liquidity, you know, and things like that, right? So that's that's always the dr I won't say the driving factor, but in the short term, there there is the driving factor, right? Unfair auctions that need to be filled, you know, market makers, da 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 da, right? So you have to always remember that. The market's not going to keep going down forever from that perspective. So what I tend to have the view is is that risk off pushes prices to where I want to be a buyer, right? It can push prices to to basically bargain, you know, bargain value, right? So me personally, I just find it easier to trade in one direction, regardless of whether I, you know, lose that trade. And I might even lose that trade, right? Cool. That's it's just what it is. Um, but at some point, yeah, first of all, price is going to have to go higher simply because of liquidity, right? One, right? And unfair auctions and market makers and just you know, general, you know, the fact that even that risk off sentiment has now been priced in. Yeah. So there's going to, it's going to find, it's going to find the flaw. It's going to find the value at some point. Yeah. And, um, and where traders generally go wrong is because they keep trading both sides of the markets, both sides of the markets and trying to pick highs and lows that they actually get, um, you know, uh, by the time uh, certain situations arise or, you know, should I buy here because they've lost here and they try to buy there. And you know what I mean? It's like, it's a mismatch of things. And you, because you traders are trying to pick highs and lows all the time, it, it, it basically, I say they blow their account, but you know, they feel a lot of pain during that time trying to buy highs and lows. Whereas for me, I'm just looking at it. Okay. I know the value of, of, of the Canadian dollar potentially is definitely a bargain. Is it a bargain here? right? Yes or no? No? Cool. No worries. If that's a previous demand zone, is it a bargain here? No. Okay, cool. I know that at some point, yeah, it's going to go to the upside, right? Because like I said, not only do we have, you know, um, in the fact that market makers are going to have to, um, you know, uh, make some money at some point and there's going to be pullbacks, liquidity, you know, auctions and stuff like that. But also as well, the the the, uh, the the war and the crisis is going to be priced in as well and also again resolution right there's going to be a resolution it's going to be um you know uh, the problem is going to get solved at some point yeah so with all that being said generally what i tend to do is look at it as far as okay they're coming down brilliant where can i try and in a way it's like you're trying to pick the bottom yeah, you're trying to pick the lows. Um, uh, and 
I don't mind doing that at certain levels. And of course, I'm not just randomly taking, you know, certain levels, right? I'm actually looking to see what the setups are and also as well, reducing my risk size. So rather than, you know, going in at, um, you know, maybe three positions, maybe going at, you know, two positions or maybe one position, going at smaller position size. I'm not trying to go in, you know, um, because it's a, it's a it's a more of a difficult environment to trade in, but like I said, at some point this will turn around, and once you know it, the prices, oh, I guess this, the the environment gets resolved, right? Let's say for example, Putin backs out, and you know they come to some agreement, and you know everything is is great again. Yeah, the the the, the upside potential for the, the the currency that you've bought. Yeah, if you're again planning on holding and understanding fundamentals as well, yeah, and understand this is severely undervalued, yeah, down here. If I lose three or four trades, yeah, that's fine. You know, five trades in a row, that's fine for me. Because I know that if, if I get in on this low, yeah, that the upside potential can be 10, 15, 20, 30 to one. So from that perspective, it's about maximizing your trade idea. So I'm not taking, you know, three or four or five or even six or even seven losses, right? I'm not taking those losses only to get into a trade to take, you know, a two to one. That's just nonsense, you know, or a three to one. The, the idea, again, this is backed by, you know, your fundamental analysis is to understand how much of a bargain this is, yeah? How much of a bargain this is when risk comes back on yeah, against the yen because once this comes back on, and we start to talk about you know high, hiking rates and who's going to be first to hike rates and da 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 da, right? Then, you know, the Canadian dollar is going to be severely undervalued, and you've got a lot more upside potential. So from that perspective, um, you know, that's really I would say my personal approach to risk off and I do want to give I guess more of an example as well um, you know a few years back uh, 2020 I think it was just before the um, the uh, the it was uh, yeah, just before COVID right so beginning of 2020 the year started off really with I think um, uh, basically Trump ordered the airstrike killed key uh, Iranian ge um, general um, general in Iraq. Yeah, and I told her, uh, Khamenei, Khamenei, I think is Cam Menai or whatever is uh, uh, vows severe retaliation for the killing. Now, um, for those of you who were with me um, at the time, um, you know you remember this, and you will. You know, remember that we were like, oh, do you know what? This is going to be crazy risk off. You know what I mean? The war is starting, yeah? And it doesn't get more hawkish, say hawkish or bullish, but um, uh, hawkish or dovish, um, but it doesn't get more risk off uh, than this, right? At the time, this is January the 3rd, 2020. So the US is sending more troops to the Middle East after President Donald Trump ordered a drone strike, right? In Iraq that killed one of Iran's most powerful generals. And, um, you know, this was like, this was like as, as, as risk off as it possibly could have got, yeah? So I remember thinking to myself, this is gonna, you know, this is definitely gonna, you know, buy, buy the yen, buy the Swiss franc, um, and, uh, and buy and, and uh, you know, sell the other currencies. But what you'll find is, is that, what we found is, is that the, in fact, prices, um, the, the, the story quickly kind of evaporated, right? In a sense that the, um, the, 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 the retaliation didn't come. And then it was just like, you know, in fact, prices moved a lot higher, right? Prices moved higher from there. So you would have thought that, for example, the dollar Swiss, you know, the Swiss franc should be the, the stronger currency, especially because the, the, the dollar is, you know, the one involved in, you know, the drone strike, etc. But if you look at what happened from, you know, from the 3rd of January, yeah, yes, prices came down, prices went up, prices came down, but it didn't sell off. Do you know what I mean? It didn't, it did not sell off. Yeah, as I thought it would have, right? So you might be thinking to yourself, well, does risk off really work? Or da 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 da. Risk off, it, and it goes back to my original point. You have to, or say you have to, but but it's very difficult to predict what the how the market is going to react 
in every single scenario. Some scenarios where you think that the market should react in a certain way, it doesn't. And some scenarios you think that the you know market you know may not react, it does, right? But it's not our job to necessarily you know predict how the market is going to react. Yes, we look back historically and say this is how you know the market. That, um, has typically reacted but every scenario is different so so my understanding of that is rather than trying to say oh we're in a risk-off scenario yep you better be selling oh we're in a risk-off on environment oh you better be buying because as we know it's not as simple as that and risk isn't a binary thing it's not risk on or risk off it is a, there's scales to risk right my thing is is just for me and um, how i found trading in, in risk off environments is that right what i want to do is i still want to get long on the dollar because when when the dust settles yeah if the dust settles sooner rather than later yeah then you know we should want to go you know higher if it becomes a non event then i'm buying for cheap Yes, I could lose a few trades, you know, going short, not necessarily, like I said, you've got to select your levels carefully. And again, as well, you know, there's, 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 you know, things like trend line breaks, if you, you know, if you want to um, understand, you know, and not get into uh, a trade and try to pick the bottom. Yeah, there are, you know, our, our trend line, the trend line break um, theory, which I'm not going to go into necessarily in this video. Right, where you're understanding, um, you know, when the market is likely to go from a you know trending market to a ranging market, for example, and then you get you can get involved in a potential you know maybe double bottom if you want to call it double bottom, but more of a ranging fair value market state. So 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 ultimately, you've got you know going back to risk off, and my approach is there's going to be you know more risk there's going to be risk on at some point or there's going to be less risk off risk off is going to be priced into the market value always prevails at the end you know emotionally there are there are definitely you know traders who are emotional and thinking it's going to be the next big thing da da da, da. but ultimately it's all about value and liquidity yeah it's all about value and liquidity in a risk off environment you get pullbacks and when you're in that pullback let's say for example you manage to you know get in on a trade right to the low side and then obviously you know you get you get in a pullback and then during that pullback what could happen because this could be you know this could be maybe monday right maybe by friday by the end of the week all of a sudden you know putin says you know what we're not invading russia Biden comes out and says, um, you know, where, 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 um, you know, we're not, we're not gonna, you know, everything's been resolved, everything's fine, or whatever it is. Then all of a sudden, the market's gonna go, oh, okay, so, the, so what we were pricing in isn't that now. So now we've got to price in what the, you know, the the commodity currency is worth versus a safe haven asset, and prices have come down, you know, four or five hundred pips. You know what I mean? Then you could be in that trade, and all of a sudden, while you're in that trade, risk sentiment changes. So, you know nobody knows where the reversal is trading is all about probability probabilities and your risk reward i say it all about there's obviously more than that but generally from a, from a very simplistic level it's about um you know you know when you're when you're looking to trade and, and and things like that it's just a case of you know can i make more yeah on my winning trades than lose when i lose a trade yeah and Again, we know swing trading and, you know, fundamental analysis, holding trades for the long term, you know, um, we're looking at, you know, bigger trades than when we lose. Yeah, because we understand at some point this was value. Right. So during Corona, you know, during that March 2020, then all of a sudden we did the opposite. Right. We did the opposite. Um uh, because there was light at the end of the tunnel when it came to certain things. Of course, prices did go, you know, a bit lower and whatever it is, dollar. Da, 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 da. And I'm not trying to, exp you know, explain all of this and what was happening throughout 2021. Of course, you know, safe haven currencies. But the point is, is that even during a risk-off environment, yeah, as well as obviously you've got to consider, um, you know, what was going on monetary policy-wise and eco um, economy-wise, etc. Um, there are pullbacks. There are definitely pullbacks to get involved in that. And again, it's not going to happen every single day or every single week, but it's just picking those moments, right? So anyways, let me get back to 
uh, the discussion room and uh, I know there was something about geopolitics and um, geopolitics again I used to kind of be you know into geopolitics um, a lot myself years ago um, you know reading up and everything especially when you're learning the fundamentals right because they're generally tied um, fundamentals is generally tied to um, uh, 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 fundamental analysis right so you've got intermarket analysis um, but what I realized over the years, again, is that it's more about, I would say, the narratives because we can get dragged from pillar to post about what story may, you know, affect, you know, this price. And none of us will truly ever know what price or what, what, what events are going to affect price and in what way and to the degree, right? Some stories, I'll give you another example, for example, the, the, the Evergrande story, right? When it was, when they were about to default, yeah, when it was the first, when it first came out, where it was, there was a possibility that Evergrande was going to default, all of a sudden the market went, you know, jittery and started selling off and all that kind of stuff. I don't know if you guys remember that. But then when Evergrande actually did you know, come to some sort of default or there was a, like the market didn't even react. Do you know what I mean? It was like, well, yeah, well, we know this. You know what I mean? We, we, we expected that Evergrande was going to default on certain things or go into some sort of admin administration. And, but the market did not react to it, not in the slightest. It's like almost like the rumor of it, the market moved. The actual fact of it, you know, happening, yeah. And the fact that they would, they, they you know, their accounts and whatever it is, the whole, that whole story, just literally just disappeared from the market so it's so again like i said it's trading in a risk off environment for me and trying to pick and uh, you know what the market is and, and the narrative that's going to be uh, decided on that is going to move the market i found to be very very difficult to do consistently yeah consistently so again for me what i do is i literally just look for buying opportunities because once things come back to normal um you know or and and things always generally do come back to normal at some point you know it's it's buying opportunities yeah so um so that's really my view on it and i know a lot of you do know that as well because you've been with me for a while and I've, I've explained this but just for just to the 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 general um guys the new guys as well who have not traded in this kind of environment um, that's that's my overall position. So if you see, if you if you're wondering why, you know I'm not, um, you know why isn't Leon going short and buying a Japanese yen or buying a Swiss franc at this moment in time? This is the reason why because I'm just waiting for the bargain, right? I, I'm not trying to pass, you know, a, a prop firm challenge, right? I've got all the time in the world to sit on my hands and wait for the uh, for the for the um, you know the market to give me the, the the right opportunity and that's not to say that you shouldn't be trading you know prop firms and things like that but it's just one of the issues you may have if for example you're trying to pass off prop firm challenge within 30 days or 60 days where you have to take where you're forced to take um you know a trade or trades that really and truly aren't the best trades because not every single day or every single week there are going to be you know top-notch trading opportunities and buying opportunities and when I say trading I mean buying opportunities because ultimately it's about value and looking for you know it's looking for the right opportunity that's going to be you know maybe that 5 10 15 20 to 1 30 to 1 type trades those are the ones right um but yeah geopolitics interesting I try not to get drawn down the rabbit hole anymore um you know I've got enough to you know think about and and do so it's uh, it's very um but yeah I would say just try to um be aware of what is going on 100% and with experience I guess you'll start to come to maybe the same conclusion as me and again it just depends on on your interest as well but what I don't want you to do is go so far down to the point where you're saying, well, you know, there's this that happened in Nicaragua and how is that going to affect the Japanese yen? It's like, ah, oh, like, you know what I mean? It's like, that's, that's not a story, you know what I mean? And, but, but we can have those, our blinkers on where we're thinking that every single, you know, geopolitical, uh, issue, how is that going to affect price? And when you start getting to that point, then it's like, 
you know, I think you've gone a bit too far down the rabbit hole because ultimately, you know, we don't need that, right? We don't need that. I don't need that. Um, and I, we don't need that to continuously, you know, be profitable and make money in the markets. We just, you know, should focus on, yes, you know, our, our bread and butter and just, you know, do it um, and, and, and that and just continue to, you know, follow that process rather than going down the rabbit hole, right? But, um, but I'm with you guys. Um, but I just haven't got the time to, you know, go on to, you know, in, into geopolitics because, like I said, it could go on, um, on and on and on. But yeah, I'm definitely aware of, of what's, what's what's happening. So, monetary policy in allied and allied with return dovish maybe cut interest rates. Yeah, I mean, um, it, it again, I was probably say euro. I'd have to have a think about that matter of fact. I think I'd have to have a think about that. But not to say that you're 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 wrong on that job rate at all because it depends on obviously the economy, depends on inflation. An interest rate cut, depending on whether inflation is high, I don't think they can do that. You know what I mean? If it's above their two percent target, then um, you know, I don't think they they'll ever start, you know, cutting rates because if you start cutting rates, you're just gonna um fuel the uh, the inflation fire, you know what I mean? So not too sure on that, but but you know Maybe they might have a higher tolerance for inflation, but I don't think they will end up, you know, cutting interest rates um, uh, for that. It depends on how bad things go, but you never, you never really know. But um, again, this could be um, just all posturing and um, and um, just jawboning with with the uh, with, with Russia and Ukraine. You know, what I mean, it's like a case of who blinks first, who's going to back down. But um, but um, eventually, hopefully, someone does back down sooner rather than later. And then all of a sudden, you know, those commodity currencies start looking like absolute bargains against the uh, safe haven currencies. Anyways, uh, I'll get into maybe some of some of these charts as well. So um, actually, matter of fact, let me do that in a separate video. I'll do that in a separate video. So, yeah, uh, I'll make a second video now and uh, and um, covering some of the uh, some of the charts and maybe some of the other comments.